Hey, welcome. Welcome to Fruits and Berries uh, Homestead here. Uh, it's probably about uh, 9 30, 10 o'clock this morning, and um, I'm just here in the front part of our property. Eventually, we'll extend the, the back fencing so to include where I'm now standing to be part of the back of our property. But I was desperate in the past couple days. Arkham? No. I got. They're trying to dig. Those dogs are trying to dig. No, Arkham, no. No, get back. Arkham, get back. This is what he does. He pulls the rocks from underneath that so they can get out. Smart, aren't they? So anyway, just real quick here. Okay, so I dug up several of the pepper plants, the squash plants, and the cucumber plants. And I tediously took a, an ax, literally an ax, like you... You would axe a tree down uh, because the previous owner in this property she had placed layers of that weed feed on this uh, what she had created a flower bed and the weeds ultimately uh, the or the crabgrass and everything sort of actually glue, grew on top of it oh, just a ugly ugly sad situation anyway I've, I have made the decision to create it into our uh, grape vineyard and uh, to rescue uh, the plants out of the garden beds that I believe have been poisoned by that peat moss that I used. And uh, so I, I did this in over 90 degree weather yesterday, dripping like a whatever, and totally frustrated and on my hands and knees hacksawing through the weed feed in order to get to the dirt underneath so I could and then I had to water it uh, with a hose to soften the soil so I could dig approximately a foot or more apart so I could transplant the plants that I did yesterday so what I'll show you is real fast here uh, once again the grapes that I the grapevines I did uh, that I purchased uh, what was it two or three days ago and uh, they're all in I don't have a trellis for them yet, but I got them in the ground, and they're not wilting, and in fact, they look pr pretty doggone healthy. Um, I'm looking at them as I'm talking to you. Sorry about that. I should be looking at you. <laughs> anyway, let me switch out of here. Arkham, you stay there. No, you stay there. You hear me? Okay, so there's eight. These are muscadine uh, grape vines. They actually have some grapes forming them on them. And that all happened at the nursery where I bought them. So this is their first few days in the dirt, in our planter bed, at the front side of our home here. And so far, so good. Look at the pota uh, potatoes, tomatoes, <laughs> tomato plants. They are just growing incredibly well. And... Um, and I, I do remember when I when I created that for the to rescue these tomato plants, because uh, I didn't want to see them die. I thought they would they would do really well in our garden bed, and now just the opposite. They were dying in the garden bed. So I need to get some more strings going across to prop them up. I'm going to do that today. I'm I'm going to prune them to get some of those lower leaves off the ground that's what they highly recommend so they don't get fungus and disease i'm going to do that and uh, again like i just said there's eight of these grapevines they will eventually be on a very professional trellis that i'm going to be creating uh, and uh, i'll go into that when i do that shortly uh, i don't think it's going to be this week probably maybe next week um, but anyway here is what I did. I took that axe and I had to hack through about several inches from the metal metal uh, guideline here and I uh, hacked a line all the way down going all the way down to the other end here and these are pepper plants uh, that were doing nothing. They've been in the garden bed for four weeks and they haven't changed but they're alive. What What I'm believing and praying and hoping for is that them being in good uh, nutritious soil that I believe is they're now in and even though there's never been any plants like this in this uh, flower bed 
they're not wilting. Look, they're, I, I think they, they may make it. So today is June 23rd, 23rd. And so, so these are, it's a mix of uh, the red, yellow, and red peppers. They're the more of the sweet type of peppers. They're not the uh, chili type. <laughs> anyway, this one is just really, was really pathetic, but I gave it mercy, <laughs> hoping that maybe it might do something. And then we move into the, I believe this is the, uh, oh, these are cantaloupes. Okay. I did plant about five or six of those cantaloupes. And then, okay, so I have the peppers over there. I've got the cantaloupe here to try to salvage it. Look, you know, they were trying to blossom a little bit in the garden bed, but not producing any type of fruit. I'm hoping that something can transpire and a miracle will happen. So that's the cantaloupe section there. Here is the squash section. I have about five to six in each one of these sections. So this is like, these are squash plants. Uh, I believe it's the yellow, yellow crooked neck type of squash. And then the uh, cucumber. Uh, and that's these right here. And it just sort of goes to the end right over there. And of course, all of the grapevines that I planted are just actually doing extremely well. They're, they're not having any shock from the transplant. It's, it's never recommended to plant in, in intense heat, especially in the afternoon, and I did that. So I guess it depends where you live and the soil you have, and if you're on top of it to make sure they have water and everything. Uh, over here, there's a parcel right next to us that uh, our neighbor uh, that's on another street, he bought this several years ago just for that garden that you see right over there. And he has never watered. He plants and they just come up. And the God-given rains that we get throughout the summer just naturally waters that. And uh, he he never never wanted to do garden beds. He's never had an issue. The soil here, it is a sort of a a hard type of soil. Uh, but every time I dig into it, I see earthworms, which means that they it's healthy and it's uh, it's perfect for planting. So anyway, that's his garden. That's not mine. But uh, his is right next to where I live here. And then, of course, I've got elderberry plants and blackberry plants and everything. And so the birds are already attacking the blackberries. So, and then I had the infestation of the Japanese beetles that hit us uh, just in the last few days that almost destroyed everything that I ever started to do here. So anyway, that's it. Just want to give you guys a quick update. And uh, I might, might be planning some more today or tomorrow uh, with what's left in the raised garden beds. And I'll just make room here. I really don't care. I'm not into spacing. I'll space enough. But I just want to get them into something to try to salvage uh, so they just don't die in those garden beds that I built. And I blame the peat moss. And I blame Lowe's for having such horrible peat moss. And there's, I'm hearing really horrible things about Lowe's lately and people that have bought in soil. And uh, that's here in northeastern Tennessee. So be careful if you're putting peat moss in and you're buying it from Lowe's. Check it out. Ask around. Asking, ask them if they have any issues with it. Uh, because it was devastating to me personally and to many farmers in the area are in homesteaders in our area that are doing raised garden beds so that's it uh for the moment and uh thanks for watching fruits and berries homestead uh please subscribe if you haven't i do appreciate it uh, sometimes i wonder if it's worth the youtube scenario but you know what i love with what i'm doing so i'm doing this and uh, just would love to see uh, my channel grow. I never really took it dead serious because it was just a here, just a whatever type of a channel over the past years. And then in the last three years, something hit me. I got awakened, <laughs> so to speak. And, um, and 
if you're not awakened yet to know what's going on in the world, uh, I hope you do become awakened before it's way too late. It might already, well, it's already begun um, with the cost of everything and the shelves being emptying and everything. So God bless you all. Uh, try to be a prepper. Try to store some extra food if possible and try to keep up uh, with what's going on in the world. And don't don't be hindsight. Don't don't be left behind, so to speak, uh, when everything comes crashing down, if that does occur. As a believer in Jesus Christ, somehow I'm just trusting and believing that righteousness from the Holy Spirit, from God Almighty, uh, will ultimately propel, uh, propel here. Revelations, the book of Revelations and the Word of God says it all. And uh, God wins, period. God wins. I don't care who says what or whatever. And uh, just, just because somebody makes a mandate doesn't mean it's law. So you don't have to follow the things that have currently been mandated. It's not law. You have freedom. And if you're a believer, you're a sovereign individual in the kingdom of God. So anyway, okay, that's enough of that. So have a great day, okay? Take care and God bless. Until the next one. Okay, bye-bye.